the atmosphere of Christmas has invaded all corners of Hanoi. Hang Ma Street is where most people would come to when they wish to buy decorative items for Christmas and this is also one of the brightest spots in the city to enjoy the end of Christmas. On this occasion, children would be taken to visit St. Joseph's Cathedral, a Catholic church typical for the French-style architectural Gothic design. Residents of Hanoi can see sparkling Christmas trees everywhere and they are about to celebrate Christmas themselves. Believe it or not, Christmas is widely celebrated here in Vietnam. In Hanoi right now, I'm feeling the cold weather, the festive decoration, the delicious food and so many exciting activities. And we're going to explore all of that together. Welcome to Phi Cuisine. A Christmas market opens especially for the celebration of Christmas during four weeks of December. This practice originated in Germany and first appeared in the late Middle Age, but many Christmas markets are now held in many parts of the world. Traditionally held in the town square, the market has food, drink and seasonal items from open-air stalls accompanied by traditional singing and dancing. For the second time in Hanoi, the German Christmas market was held featuring the German-style Christmas market as well as creating a cultural and entertaining space for foreigners and Vietnamese people in the city. Sausages, mobile and so many other Christmas essential. Yes, I'm talking about a wonderful Christmas tradition and that is the Christmas market. Right now, we're here in the German-style Christmas market in Kobach Church in Hanoi. But I don't want to be alone on such a nice day, so I call up some friends and um, here they are. Hi, guys! Hi! Hi. 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 So nice to see you! Nice to see you! Hi! How are you? How are you? It's like oh such God. a long time. Yes, such a long time. They are some of my friends from Germany, where is the home of Christmas market, so that they might introduce me to some of the highlights of the annual event. That's a typical Christmas scene when Jesus was born, something like this. And you can see uh, Maria, the mom of the mother of Jesus. <laughs> and, yeah, and the angels and the traditional like, three kings are coming and they're bringing gifts to the Jesus. My friends told me that there's one must try in every Christmas market. It smells so good and it looks so good. What is yeah. it? It's red wine uh, with many spices. Uh, it's called Mulwein, right? Yeah, What's yeah. What's the word in uh, German? And the German word for it is Glühwein, which means like uh, directly translated glow up wine. Because you, after you feel it, you feel like glowing up because it keeps you warm and healthy. Wow! Yeah. So it's the ultimate uh, Christmas drink. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it's very traditional to drink it every year during Christmas season. Klovine or mold wine is popular in German-speaking countries during Christmas holidays. Mold wine is usually prepared from red wine, heated and spiced with cinnamon sticks, cloves, star anises, citrus, sugar and at times vanilla pots. In some German Christmas markets, mold wine is traditionally the only alcoholic beverage served. For those reasons, it can't be denied that mold wine is a must try drink here. Good? I think it's good too. Uh, okay. Nice. Because he drank a lot and this was the best, right? So, yeah. so like, it's very really aromatic. Yeah, yeah, because of all the spices in it. Yeah, and the orange juice makes it less strong. Oh, yeah. It's like a juice. I love it. I'm to eat. Wow, so what is 
Oh, this is a typical German uh, potato salad. It's called Kartoffelsalat. Wow. And uh, this is like a uh, boulette. It's always served with the side dish, the Kartoffelsalat, potato salad. And this is the um, schnitzel. It's very typical Bavarian, so for wow. thousand Germany. And uh, it's made of um, pig and then oh, put it in egg oh, okay. and then put it in the coat and then fry it. So uh, there, there's like so much going on. What do you recommend? What's your favorite? Like, I oh, think I, I like the schnitzel the most. Oh, you okay. like to try it? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, so I like to have one. I can tell I am a schnitzel. <laughs> We order one plate of salad, potato and schnitzel. This is the first time I try these dishes, especially at Christmas market. I really feel like being at home right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. You guys like it? Mm. Yes, and you? Do you like it? I like it too. It's, it's like just my like my mom made it. <laughs> oh, just like your mom made it. Yes. Typical German schnitzel with potato salad. <laughs> but when it's like cold outside in winter, people like to eat something warm. And then like the schnitzel and the potato salad is the best. <laughs> so delicious! <laughs> that is not the last dish served at this Christmas market. My overseas Vietnamese friends took me to taste a very typical German dish, sausage. The man who makes it is also from Germany and is living and working in Da Nang City. What he brought to the market is German standard sausage. Well, what, what are the different types of sausages? Like, um, there's like Bratwurst and Krakauer and Currywurst. Like, there are a lot of, Germany have a lot of sausages, mm -hmm. but this one is typically sold, uh, sold at Christmas markets. So, what do you usually eat uh, with a German sausage? Um, German sausage can be eaten with tomato sauce or mustard, but most people prefer mustard because it kind of has a spicy taste and really fits with the sausage. Sausages and, and then you wrap it around it and just eat the sausage. Cheers! cheers. Sausage cheers! <laughs> As I have participated in several Christmas markets in England that are bigger than this market, I can feel the same atmosphere. So walking around this German Christmas market, tasting German traditional food, make us live the atmosphere of Germany. And my German friends also feel like home when the holiday season comes near. There are many variations of the Christmas dinner around the world, but there's one thing they have in common that they're all very festive and so, so delicious. Today, we are going to learn a few of these Christmas dishes from Austrian chef Gerald Prince. From Austria, with over 20 years living in Asia, he had a chance to cook at all three regions of Vietnam. Currently, Chef Gerald Prince is the director of culinary at Hanoi Daewoo Hotel. Whichever position he's in charge of, Gerald Prince wants cuisine to be the connection of cultures and to introduce the diverse dishes of the world. On Christmas this year, he has come up with the idea of building a version of the Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica of Saigon with gingerbread house, a typical bread for Christmas right in the hotel. Not satisfied with the sole chocolate flavor, he added the coconut and strawberry flavors to make the colorful festival on the feast table of Christmas. Furthermore, he invented a menu of European dishes with typical food from Austria, his home country. The menu today I designed is a typical Austrian-inspired Christmas menu. The starter the salmon, usually it has to be used salmon trout. Then of course, uh, as the main, we had the roast turkey. 
And uh, for the dessert, of course, uh, the apple strudel, but uh, for Christmas, to make it a bit more festive, uh, I used mixed berries. They are soaked in rum and some cheese, which is a very unique flavor. The salmon tartar is basically the salmon mix with many kinds of sauces. The Austrian can use salmon trout or rainbow trout instead of salmon. This dish holds a very unique way of marinating salmon. Basically, the, it's first marinated. You use, uh, it's very basic, uh, simple. One liter water, 80 gram of salt and 20 gram of sugar. You make like a brine. This salmon or salmon trout, you place in the brine and you can leave it overnight. And overnight and the next day, if you use it, you take it out, you dry pad it, and then it's ready to slice. I served it with cucumbers. Then I had a lemon, uh, lemon cream, a little bit of sour cream, the sago bowl soaked in soya sauce. So you have the lemony flavor from the, from the lemon cream and as well the salty flavor uh, from the sago soaked in soya sauce. The food decoration is also very impressive. We have, uh, the, I made the, the yellow comes from a saffron oil. Then we have uh, also uh, some squid ink. And the cream color is from the dill. And then the dark red is from the beetroot. And on top of it, uh, as well, of course, because you have so many colors, it makes it more festivity, more happy. I met Chef Gerald Prince when he was preparing for his toast turkey. I will make some um, stuffing for the turkey. Turkey in itself, the meat is not very exciting. But the whole things, the condiments and the trimming makes it exciting. You eat it with, said we had uh, the stuffing from, with ham, apples, onions. We added the herbs rosemary, uh, thyme inside, and bread. We put all the ingredients for stuffing together and cook. When the mixture of the ingredients is done, we put eggs and cream, and that is done for the stuffing. So, apart from turkey, what are the other meat options for Christmas? Um, in Europe, quite a lot of uh, people use duck, roast duck, or goose. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Austria, it's more traditional to use mm -hmm. roast goose, wow. because it has more flavor and everything. The turkey would be toasted during three hours. Watch it. Watch it. Once the turkey is usually two and a half to three hours, you place the turkey in the oven, it's cooked, the stuffing is automatically also cooked. But on, on top of it, of course, the stuffing also soaks up some flavors from the turkey. The, the stuffing is quite tasty. I prefer the stuffing with the turkey. Before tasting, Chef Jer Prince still has one more dish to show me. That is dessert. The main ingredients for this dish are floured bread, cheese, and many kinds of berries. Not apple strudel, a very traditional dish from Austria, but berry strudel. If you make a berry strudel like that, it starts the whole year. And when the season is, you have strawberry season, for example, you add them in a glass jar with sugar and rum. Then the next season come, you have raspberry. You top up with raspberry, a little bit sugar and rum. 
So with each, each season, the bot gets bigger and you have more varieties. Cherries, later on we have lingonberries, blueberries, boysenberries, so many different kinds of berries. And the unique thing, of course, because of the sugar and the rum, all the flavors. And after a few months, you get very, very strong rum, sweet flavor. The next stage is to make the cheese filling. The cheese filling was made from cheese, eggs, milk, sugar, and bread. All of these ingredients were mixed until they blended together, creating a smooth mixture. And the last stage of making berry strudel is to make the strudel. Only with flour, salt, cooking oil, and water, let's see how the strudel is made. And it would be more interesting for me to participate in this stage. I heard that this is the most difficult stage in making a strudel, is that? Yes, that's right. I will show you, I will teach you, and uh, it will be simple for you. We used about 300 to 500 grams of flour, add some water, cooking oil, a little bit of salt, and mix them together. The cooking oil would make the dough softer and more sticky. Like uh, this one is usually. So, what do you think makes the essence of uh, a strudel? Is that the filling or is that the dough? Um, it's both. It's you need too. you need a good dough, mm -hmm. and also the filling. Basically. You can put anything in a strudel, mm -hmm. from uh, from uh, salty to sweet, mm -hmm. any kinds of fruits. The dough needs to rest, mm -hmm. which means uh, half an hour to an hour, and then the pulling starts. Then the real challenge starts. What we have to do now is to pull the dough as thin as I can, but don't leave any holes in the strudel. Chef Gerald told me that this step needs skills. So this is my first time making a straddle and uh, I have to say it is so much fun. It's a little bit difficult but um, I've got Chef right here to help me. Stretching the dough adding this cheese filling and the mixture of berries, baking and plating would be the final step. So you have berry, mixed berries, infused with rum and some cheese, which is a very unique flavor and especially suitable for Christmas. Okay, so now we get to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Let's start with the starter. I'm so excited, I can't tell you guys. And the sauce. It's fantastic. You taste the lemony, mm. the lemon cream. Yeah, it's a bit sweet. Um, sweet, sour. No. And this is best served with white wine? White wine, yes. Now, well, cheers. Cheers. As Chef Jared said, the turkey meat on its own is not impressive, but the stuffing. Let's see how it tastes. The sweet and sour taste of a lingonberry and the red cabbage, the sweet taste of the honey glazed chestnut goes perfectly with this juicy piece of turkey. It's like Christmas in a mouth. So now we are at the final dish, a speciality of Austria, a berry strudel. Thank you. Wow. 
you really can taste the rum, the, the, rum, the fruit uh, soaked in rum and sugar, 50 spice. But it's not too strong mm. as you have also the, the cream cheese, the creaminess takes off a little bit the sharpness of the alcohol. So thank you so much for your hospitality and for all this amazing Christmas food. I love it. So thank you very much. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Delicious desserts. I'm talking Bush de Noel, gingerbread man, candy cane, and so on. And that's why today we are meeting with Chef Celine. He's an incredible friend of chef and owner of Odo Sur right here in Hanoi. I'm very excited to meet him and hopefully I can learn some of his secrets in making delicious Christmas treats. So let's go. My name is Silen. I'm French, 34 years old. I've been a pastry chef since I'm 17. As far as I can remember, I always wanted to be a baker. If you ask my dad, he will say that I asked him to start to bake when I was four years old. So every Sunday, we used to bake a cake at home. And that's where it all begins. Silan has been running a bakery shop in Hanoi for nearly five years. I decided to pay him a visit to pick up some Christmas treats for desserts, among many options including ginger candies, Christmas cookies. Silan recommended me the Bouche de Noël. In France, um, we usually eat uh, for Christmas and for dessert Bouche de Noël. It's a traditional cake. Uh, that come from um, a, a traditional story which that when we when people used to um, so at the beginning of winter uh, the, the the husband and the man of the house was going to the forest to cut a big piece of wood a big log and this piece of wood um, uh, was burning slowly to warm all the house. And that's where the, the, the idea of the Bûche de Noël, the Christmas log, came from. So right now I'm having Chef Silen's Bûche de Noël right in front of me. And uh, first impression, uh, it looks like a log. It looks like a beautiful log uh, with chocolate shavings and a little Christmas tree on top. It looks very appetizing. So um, I'm very excited. Let's take a bite. It's very good. It's, um, it's creamy, um, but it's not too sweet. It's perfectly balanced. And this is not a traditional uh, bouche de noix. It's one uh, made with a little bit of twist um, with apple fillings. Um, and during cold day like this, I think um, you can enjoy a bouche de noix with um, a cup of hot tea. And right now I'm very curious how Chef Selene made this signature Christmas treat. Firstly, Chef Silen made the sponge cake. The process of sponge cake is to uh, whisk the eggs and the sugar until it's light, light color and fluffy. Then we add the butter and the milk. Uh, and then we add the, the flour. Once the mix is ready, we pour it over uh, the, the, the baking tray and we bake it at about 200 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. The filling of this sponge cake is the work of Silen himself. Apart from the cream, which is a traditional filling, Silen added apples to the sponge cake. 
But first, let's see how he makes the cream. Uh, we boil the cream with the, the, the vanilla, the fresh vanilla. Uh, once it's very hot and once it's boiled, we pour, pour it over the white chocolate and the gelatin. Um, we make sure that it's mixed and all, all the chocolate dissolve and, and melt. Um, then we keep it in the fridge for 24 hours. Remove the core of the ap apple, peel the skin, cut in dice, prepare a syrup which is water and sugar. The apple should be cooked until it's still a little bit firm, but we can see that it's melting when you, you try one. Not crunchy. When everything else is ready, now is the time to add to the sponge cake a layer of cream, a thin layer of caramel and apple soaked into the syrup. And after that, we start the rolling work. So we're going to turn those uh, delicious looking sponge rolls into bouche vanilla. Exactly. Okay. Uh, we did two kinds of uh, decoration. Uh, one very traditional with a nozzle that looks like a wood effect. And the one little bit more modern where we shaved chocolate and placed chocolate uh, all around the log. Then of course the little uh, Christmas tree made in chocolate. Over there. You can use many things uh, to decorate your, your, your log. You can use dry fruit, you can use as you're liking. Apart from the Bush de Noel, gingerbread man and ginger cookies are also a Christmas dessert. In every season holiday, children around the world are eager to have and even to make those cookies. From a folk tale in 1875 about a gingerbread man escaping an old lady's oven and various pursuers before being eaten by a fox, the gingerbread man has become a Christmas essential. Baking and decorating gingerbread men are always so much fun and actually quite easy, making it an ideal Christmas activity even for children. So right now, I'm in a class with all my friends. Hi! Hi. And we're going to make some gingerbread cookies. Are we excited, guys? Yes! At the baking class, children can do whatever they want and can be whoever they want. That is why baking class is always the most attractive destination for them, especially on holiday seasons. Children are taught all processes of making a cookie, from how to break the egg, mix the eggs with butter to add the flour. <coughs> Although they still have difficulties making the cookies, these young learners are very excited as they can play with the dough and use favorite frames to form their cakes. Hôm nay con làm bánh là làm hình con gấu. Con nát đồ hình cây thông, với cả hình cái áo, hình bông tuyết. Baking time is always the most long-awaited time for these kids. They are very patient to look at small changes in their cookies. And finally, decoration time has come. It is a lot harder than I thought 
not a first, but we've all worked so hard, we've been so creative, and now it's time to say... Merry Christmas! wonderful adventure that we had together we've hit the Christmas market we labor away in the kitchen trying to make Christmas food and we join a baking class with the world's most talented junior master chef but you know what apart from the death festive decorations the food Christmas is all about family so I hope that everyone is enjoying your time with your loved one during this Christmas for now goodbye and Merry Christmas